Now, ladies and gentlemen, on this first problem, the main important thing, when we're determining the degree and the leading coefficient, we need to make sure that we have everything in what we call descending order, meaning from highest power to lowest power. Well, we have 4 in front, and then we have 1, and then we have x to the 0, because that's a constant. So is this already in descending order? Yes, sir. Yes. So guess what? We don't have to do any work for um, determining the, uh, put in descending order. However, now what we need to do is determine what is the degree and the leading coefficient. So the definitions that I gave you in class, Sorry. I, I, I'm just trying to help you out. I really want to help you out. Um, so to determine the degree, remember, ladies and gentlemen, that's the largest power. So you look up here and you say, what is the largest power? It's supposed to be in front, right? So the largest power is? Four. Then the leading coefficient is the coefficient of that exponent. So therefore, we look at the exponent that has the degree, and we see the leading coefficient is negative 3. It's not negative 3x or negative 3x to the fourth. It's the coefficient, the number in front. That was it. Yes? <coughs> Basically, x to the 0 is what? 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So 1 times 5 is 5. So what I'm just doing, I just wrote it in there. You don't have to write it in there. I just wrote it in there so you can see that it's going in from largest power to smallest power. Okay, so anytime you have a constant, you, sh you can know, understand that there's an x to the 0 there. And we'll get to that a little bit later in the chapter as well. Um, so now we need to determine classification. So when we did this in class, I went over two different ways to classify. You can classify by its degree or classify by the number of terms. So again, this is something that should be in your notes. When classifying by degree, I'm not going to go write these down because they should already be written down. Um, but if not, you can, you know, if you weren't here, um, you can go and get them. But degree, if it had a degree of 1, it's a, it's a linear. Degree of 2, it's quadratic. Degree of 3, it's cubic. And degree of 4, it's quartic. So we look at this degree and we say, oh, the degree is 4, so it's quartic. If it has a degree of higher than 4, then we just leave it as a degree of 5. We just say degree of 5, degree of 6, whatever. Then we look at the number of terms. If it has one term, it's a monomial. Two terms, binomial. Three terms, trinomial. And if it has four or more terms, we just say a polynomial with four terms. Polynomial, five terms. Well, this one has three terms, so it's called a trinomial. Okay. Then the last thing we went over was determining n behavior. Now, when we determined n behavior, um, basically what we did was we had a box. And you guys should have in your notes, we dealt with kind of the box. And from the box, we talked about the degree and the leading coefficient. And remember, it, depend, it depended on, n behavior depended on if the degree was odd or even, and if the leading coefficient was positive or negative. Now, I'm not going to fill in this chart because, again, this is something in previous notes I don't want to spend the time on. But we notice here my degree is even. And my degree is negative. So when your degree is even and your leading coefficient is negative, the graph uh, falls, falls left, and falls right. So if you guys go ahead and find your little table for here, that should help you with determining the end behavior of your next example. Okay. So why don't you guys spend just a couple minutes and see if you can do the next example on your own. 